afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody, dear colleagues. I acted as a moderator for the workshop number one. The subject we dealt with is so formulated the roles of the library in a fast changing media market. This morning we will get a lot of inputs about the subject so we've been able to form our own opinions. And uh, we have concentrated on the subject in order to be able to set up a list of good reasons why should library work in the future. Together with the two speakers, both of them coming from Holland, Erna Winters and Echo van Nispen Tot Sevenair, we decided to work uh, through a dialogue. One person for the games, so to say, there were arguments uh, against libraries and arguments for libraries. The arguments against the libraries uh, were the sort, of, the sort of speeches you can hear quite uh, usually in today's world. Well, books are a thing of the past, libraries are obsolete, what is the use of smelling, you see, the paper and the dust inside the libraries, you see. After all, you can find everything in Google, you see. Just have a look at Google and you will find the answers to any questions you might have. My children don't like books. If they were to choose between an e-device and a book, they would obviously choose an e-device. So actually, there is no future for libraries. Libraries are expensive. Librarians tend to work uh, on a theoretical plane. They should be re-educated, you see, and you should teach them how to work in the real world. And this was the kind of arguments uh, which were, you know, put forward against libraries. Instead, the other person was for libraries, so actually she fully disagreed with the arguments put forward by the colleague. And uh, this uh, element, uh, I mean, the fact of agreeing with libraries, was uh, subsequently discussed with all the colleagues and we eventually made a list. So, we made four lists, and in, well, three lists to be honest, you see, and with the fourth group we tried to focus uh, rather on the points uh, which were in common uh, among uh, the three lists uh, which had already been set up. And now I'm going to give you a short, you see, to give you a list of the arguments for which we think, as a workshop, that there might be good reasons, you see, for the libraries to work in future time as well. I will begin, you see, by an argument which is supposed to be of immediate understanding. First of all, uh, Libraries should be open because there are a place for people. People will go to the libraries, they will meet inside the, li the library, and this is a space open for them to enjoy it. And of course, if we're talking about a place, we need a building. We have to be an offline, so to say, kind of facility. So, we need a building, and this building must be attractive. Because people don't like to go to unattractive places. I'm glad to be here because this building is so attractive. And I think this is ready for everybody. So, this people's place must be set inside an attractive building. What is the reason why people should go to this uh, Place, uh, lots of reasons. They could be there in a passive way, but they could be there in an active way as well. And uh, a very interesting word emerged during the conversation, co-create. So, so uh, through modern technologies, it is possible to produce cultural elements. But of course, you can also have uh, a passive attitude, you can go to this building, to this uh, place for people, 
to read, to work on computers, or just to feel well. Because inside of this personal space of this building where you can co-create, you will find a very quiet, a very calm environment. Think of the word serendipity. So, we live in a very noisy society where it's difficult to get the conditions enabling you to concentrate fruitfully on some or another subject. So, this place for people inside the building, attractive one, right, in order to co create it in a context of serendipity. And such a place can be open 24 hours a day, let's say around the clock, and for seven days. But there is another aspect uh, which is important. The result of uh, attending a place like that, can it be described through a word, through an effective word, to convince, you see, the interlocutor, the person we are talking to? And uh, a very effective word has been suggested, empowering making people aware. Of course, you can find entertainment as well, you can listen to music, you can uh, enjoy cultural activities of this kind, but the main point is empowering, making people aware. Because if you're not aware of your rights, of, the, of your position inside a society, gradually you might lose them because you are not in the position of defending them, simply because you don't realize how important it is. Um, and there is another result which can be achieved by attending libraries in the way I try to describe them to you. Libraries must be a 100% guarantee for digital natives. I'm not a digital native, but time is passing, time flies, it flows very quickly and na digital natives by now are a reality, something we actually have to deal with. In most cases it's impossible under ordinary conditions to guarantee the level which is necessary in today's work for digital natives. Inside this building to co-create, we must guarantee for them to achieve the result of being totally, of being completely efficient digital natives. And then, the last but not least, should itself be free? Should it not be free? Some colleagues said that it should be free because after all, we pay taxes. So, let them cut the budget somewhere else, but let them keep free access to libraries. Other people instead suggested that perhaps the idea of free access needs reconsidering and suggested that at least free access must be guaranteed, must be maintained for children. Well, this is uh, the list of uh, arguments which have been put forward for the library to continue the mission. Thank you for your attention.
Kalau dia buka, dia 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 lagi muntah dia dia macam ni, dia ni macam sama. Yes, we had the easy parts and we were dealing with the copyright issues. We had Harald von Hirschbrunner. I'm not sure about this pronunciation. Was it okay? Okay, thanks. And Peter Schoen. Harald is from Neblina, and Peter is a lawyer who is leading feds in this country. What comes to copyright issues? And I think the discussion was very much about uh, is will this problem of you know getting the books to libraries uh, will it be dealt by legislation or agreement between publishers and uh, and, uh, and libraries? <clears throat> Actually, we came to a conclusion that this is not about the copyright issue at all. Uh, nobody wants to remove the knowledge of copyright except maybe pirates, but the libraries are not the pirates of this field. Actually, if uh, there weren't any copyrights, there would not be any libraries either. Because at least the municipalities which are part of the libraries, they would uh, think that, okay, it's very easy, we have this plug, we have this internet library, we tear down this building and kick, and kick the people away. Uh, that's the way of saving money. If all the information is available free in, and there was there would not be no good production but either. Oh, so to have libraries, to have books, to have writers, to have publishing houses, we need some kind of some form of copyright. So how could we proceed? We were talking, we were talking a lot about from different angles, people with different groups, about how do we proceed with this agreement between publishers and, uh, and libraries. Um, and I think the there was a consensus that uh, legislation would not solve the problems because the process itself, making laws, is too slow in this rapidly developing field. So we would have a law referring to yesterday's world when it's, once it's finished because we don't know what the situation would be after five years. So the, the agreement is maybe the direction we need to be moving. Uh, and there, there are some, uh, mis some disagreements about the contents of this uh, agreement between public houses and libraries. Um, my personal doubt, which I expressed to one of the groups, uh, is that uh, maybe the publishing houses want to repeat what the record companies managed to do uh, for a couple of decades ago, when. Uh, the technology was shifted from LP record to C. The record companies managed to sell, resell the same record to the people they already had. Maybe that's what the publishing houses are wishing to find us out to do with the ebooks as well. They want to resell us our home libraries. We don't know, but uh, that's, I think that's one thing we must keep in mind. Um, the, and one risk is that if we are too slow, and this came up in group discussion, is that people will take the process in their own hands. They, they search for the information, they, they start using the new technologies, and they kind of uh, skip uh, the whole thing between libraries and publishers and, and move themselves to another direction where uh, and the negotiation will, will, will take place in a dusty room with lots of spiders and nobody's paying attention to it. So something needs to be done. Um, and uh, for final word, um, something, uh, this came up too, that uh, nobody seems to be aware of the details of uh, the American system. This, uh, this detail thing came up many times. And so my suggestion is that next Berlina meeting could be about these very details. Okay, thank you. <laughs>
And last, last lesson um, was that politicians are fact-driven, but at the moment it is difficult to show facts about these <coughs> services, about the value of these services, and how to show the impact of learning, the impact of these services on learning. So we have a lot to do uh, if we want to draw political attention.